What's up guys and welcome back, we're here with another historical battle, this time it's the Battle of Mohacs in the Ottoman-Hungarian Wars, which is also in the Ottoman-Habsburg Wars, this is the end of the, this battle culminates the end of the Ottoman-Hungarian Wars and starts the Ottoman-Habsburg Wars. In history, uh, in it was in 1526 and in history the Ottomans did go on to win it. Um, so... We are using the 1212 AD mod and to show off the Ottoman faction as well, it's all as well as um, recreating this battle. Um, on the other side we have a Hungarian army getting ready and in position. Um, so we'll quickly look at the Ottoman army while the Hungarians are finally still setting up. So we have two units of hand gunners here. Um, these guys remind me of like the Janistries, these guys look, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name but they look excellent, I mean look at these guys. Look at that guy there. I mean, it's going to let me look at that guy. There we go. Look at that man. He looks ready for war. He looks definitely like he's been pr prized from a, from a family and conscripted into the army. Um, and then we've got like these uh, Martelosis. These are, look more like Greek sort of units. Um, these could be like sort of like Greek Byzantine units that have been like conscripted or like sworn lo loyalty to um, the Ottomans. I don't know. And then we've got these guys, these heavy infantry, with their huge axes look excellent. They look like they're uh, ready to do some damage and uh, get kill some people. And then what have we got? In the third line of infantry we have uh, Noka foot guards, which are, um, they are infantry but with archer capabilities as you can see here, they have bows out. Um, they are medium me melee infantry but they're pretty damn good, I'm, I've found. And then we've got more guys that look like Janissaries in my opinion. Um, we've got some uh, Billman. I'm not even going to try and say that first name. It's just definitely going to insult someone. But, I mean, these guys, they look awesome as well. I mean, I've got four units of these. Um, I've got four units of foot guards. I think six of these heavy infantry and about six of those uh, medium inf melee infantry there. We then have, on this flank, on the right flank, we have three units of horse archers. I now get to use... Uh, my bane against the Hungarians. Um, I mean, and look at them. These guys look amazing. Let's try and get... Oh, I apologize. Let's try and get a better look at that guy. Look at that guy. He looks insane. He looks like he's wearing the armor of a king. And then we have more archers here with... Uh, with uh, more archers. We have more infantry with archer uh, capability. So, I mean... Um, yeah, these guys are just called like the Zer, the Zerli Archers or something like that. I'm not even going to try and say their name. But, I mean, they look awesome. And they've got, and they can use those shields on their back as well, so they'll take them off. So that is, I mean, that's just amazing. They can form shield wall. They're just, 1212 is an amazing job with some like the abilities that these guys can do. Then on this flank we have, uh, we have some heavy cavalry. We have some Sifa cavalry. Um, these guys are basically... The shock cavalry of the, they like the cataract shock cavalry of the Ottoman Empire. They look, look very similar to a horse archer. They also have uh, archer capability. I did not realize that. I did not know that. Well, that might come in handy. And then we have behind them some spears, um, just some medium spears to help support these cav. Because I thought they just charged straight in, but clearly not. And then over here we have some cannons. We have a bombard for the Ottomans, and then we have, because it's the Ottomans. Oh, no, that's just a bombard. We have the Great Bombard. Look at that thing. There's only one of it, but, I mean, that is huge. And these men, they know, I'm, I feel like these guys know what they're doing. It's, they brought it straight from the Siege of Constantinople, which happened about, I don't know, 40, 50 years ago. No, more than that, actually. More like 70 years ago, actually. Um, And then we have my general here, who's just a horse archer unit. Uh, pretty similar to those ones over there, but he looks pretty cool. But, I mean, the uh, Ottomans did bring 300 cannons to the Battle of Mohawks. I could have brought a third unit to kind of, like, each one was 100, 100. But I was like, if I bring the Great Bombard, that kind of counts as two. Um, and the Hungarians did also bring their own Bombard. They brought a, uh, well, they brought 85. So they've got their own Bombard. It's getting up into position. It's taking a little time. But it's getting there. So we'll, uh, we'll up the speed a little bit while we go through the Hungarian army. Um, so, I mean, what have the Hungarians got? They've got some militia spears. I mean, these guys are just kind of holding the flanks. They look kind of cool with their, uh... There you go, look at that shield. That is a good, uh, good sh look. Uh, a good-looking shield. There we go. If I can actually pronounce words today. And that one is as well, actually. 
How come Militia are getting probably the best looking shields around? I mean, that's not on, really. Then we have some Halberdiers. These guys, uh, oh, these are mercenary Swiss Halberdiers. Ah, of course, yes. Um, so, well, it wasn't just Hungary that came to this battle. There was also Austria and the Papal States. And the Papal States being represented by the Swiss Halberdiers, um, or just the Swiss, because they, the Pope's bodyguard are Swiss. So, that is their being representation. Austria, not really being represented at all, really. You could just kind of imagine they're like the swords back here or something. So yes, they've got four units of Swiss, uh, no, two units of Swiss halberdiers, four units of halberdiers, and um, they have four units of mercenary Swiss pikemen. I mean, so they've got some solid stuff to try and hold us at bay. Um, I mean, but look at this disgusting formation. I mean, it looks amazing, to be fair. So they have six units of pavies, uh, I think about four, actually, it might be four. Four units of Pavi's spearmen. Um, and then they have the, those halberdiers in behind. I mean, look at these guys. Look at this line. That is insane. And that is just full of spears and halberds. There is no way any infantry is getting, breaking through that like without first bashing it down a little bit. That may be where the bombard comes in. Then we have their own handguns over here. They brought some... I mean, it's a, we are in the day, uh, the age of uh, gunpowder at this point. The Battle of Pavia, which is the first European battle to use, uh, like handguns, um, has happened. And Cressy with the cannons, more pikes. Oh, and all of a sudden, there we go. We have an explosion going off. I mean, and quickly to wrap up, they have some swords, um, and they have four units of Hungarian knights, and their general is here. But, I mean, there we go. There's one lot already going off. Um, I think these cannons are possibly a little bit too close to these uh, Genoese crossbows. Um, oh, of course, yeah, they've got some crossbows as well. I do apologize. I, they're kind of rushing for time. But, I mean, they may be about to get some friendly fire. Let's see if there's another another lot goes off. Here come some rounds. They are going to hit. Back here, possibly. Oh, just missed. Yeah, they kind of... Oh, that was a good hit. Getting a few more of the General's bodyguard. They got quite a few. Good to get uh, weaken them a bit. General's bodyguard being insanely powerful. Got a few uh, swordsmen as well. I kind of just have my uh, artillery just go and fire at will, so it's kind of just firing at whatever it likes. Um, that will be the great bombard. I imagine that one random shot. Uh, I should have told them to fire at this huge spear wall that's going on here, and just seen the devastation that could be caused. But as you can see, I think the bombard here is firing into its own Genoese crossbows, so that's a bit unfortunate. That time they didn't seem to get anyone. They were lucky that time. Oh, that was a good hit. Maybe not. Maybe the maybe it, I thought I saw when watching the replay back earlier, um, the Genoese crossbows getting hit by their own bombards. But I mean, it looks like they are getting hit by uh, Ottoman bombards as well. Let's see. Let's see with this one. It just looks like how could the cannonball get so far up in the air in time? I don't think it could. One's fired. Have the rest gonna fire? That one, the one behind me's fired. Oh, and it's actually been destroyed. The one here got destroyed by a fellow, by another bombard. Kind of wish we caught that. I'm kind of just waiting out on this. Um, but it's not gonna happen by the looks of it. But the uh, horse archers have advanced, and it is they're able. They've actually got some insane range. They're already shooting at some malicious spearmen here. That is pretty good. I think the bombards have held, are holding fire for a bit. I mean, look at that. The, if these bombards fire now, they're in some serious... Those Genoese crossbows are in some serious trouble. They've got another bombard down. Yeah, that definitely took out some of their own Genoese. Actually, no, it didn't. How did that not take out any... They made a stern stuff for these Genoese crossbows, but I mean, I think the uh, artillery is focusing down his artillery. And they were abandoning um, the, the bombards themselves. And here we go. The first clash of infantry is about to happen. It looks like it's those Mortaloses, or whatever they're called, going in against the Pavis crossbows and the Halberdiers. A clash of infantry. Um, the, these poor swords are probably not going to have much chance. They're pretty low tier. And they're also uh, up against a, a solid wall of spears and shields. Like, these these shields are not going to let anyone pass. There's a reason why you're using them. 
not letting anyone get close. Um, I think I'm possibly shooting some of my own uh, Mortaloses here, so I decided just to send them in instead of getting shot in the back by handgunners. But they are the handgunners are trying to focus down these pikes, which they managed to kill a couple. But that's about it. Um, it now looks like I've forgotten what I'm doing now. Oh yes, we're sending the horse archers after his cavalry. Because I was quite happy that these these horse archers look like they're pretty armored. They could take out these uh, these cavs. And here we go. They shoot a few, but I don't think they do any damage. But it doesn't matter. Now comes forward the infantry. They are just going to chase off this cav. I'm happy to let him do this. It takes his cavalry all the way out of uh, the battlefield. And now he's just going to allow my uh, archers just to focus down his militia. I mean, let's quickly go back to the main fight here in the middle. So, I mean, the swords, as you can see, look at this thick line they've got to break through. There's, it's going to take a lot of ammunition and men. But we do outnumber them. Um... The Turks did outnumber the Hungarians by about 20 to 30,000. They had about 70,000 troops, put, while the uh, Hungarians did possibly have between 30 and 40,000. Well, the, the Christian coalition, we'll call it. It is the Hungarians in this, but there was a lot of other nations there. We've got to remember that. And here we go. The Billmen are going in against Pikes. Billmen, uh, Billmen against Pikes. Well, these are halberdiers, basically. Um, they do have the reach, but if they can get close enough, they could possibly do some damage. But, I mean... Doesn't look like they're gonna look. The Swiss are just holding them at bay. I mean, they're not even like. There we go. Then we give the attack order, and they're, they're probably gonna start dying now. There you go. There's the first. Oh dear. Rest in peace. Who do they rally? Who's rallied for them? Oh, these militia spears. Well, wow, these guys got devastated by these archers. Devastated. So I mean. We've committed Billman on this side as well, but again, being held off by... I mean, these are being held off by Swiss Halberdiers. This is a bit more of a fair advantage that they can get in. Well, these are pikes here, actually. Need to kind of shunt to the left and kind of just take on these Halberdiers. But, yes, it looks like already we are losing uh, sword units. are already breaking. It's not looking good for the Ottomans early on. Because, I mean... It's just a solid wall of pikes and swords that are going on. And there's been a cav battle over here now. The cavalry I have engaged. So, I mean, doesn't look like a lot going on. There's not many deaths. Um, but, I mean, I'd imagine my Seifers may come out on top, I think, just because of numbers. that There's three to two. Uh, unless they send any uh, reinforcements there. But we're kind of tying up anything that they can send there with these spears. Which are getting destroyed themselves by halberdiers. I'm just sending stuff in, but everything's just been outranged. Like, even these spears, they can't get quite close enough to just take out these halberdiers. Which probably haven't even taken a loss. No, they haven't. These guys are basically untouched. I've decided to pull back uh, these billmen just to stare at these Swiss pikes. Because there's no point in keeping them there. I'm actually just, like, telling these guys to just, like, just get focused. Focus these guys down. I mean, we're probably shooting a few of our own buildmen in the back, but it's a big, it's a sacrifice we're willing to take. The Turks have no lives here. We could just conscript more. I mean, we're just focusing down all of their buildmen here with their archers before we send them in. But we do have now a hole in their line, and as you can see, I'm committing troops forward now. We're sending archers forward to go and do some damage. And these buildmen here, still holding their ground, not really doing anything. But we're, we are... I mean, we're barely making any ground. Barely making any ground. And there, these final swords look like they've been pushed back. I think they're rallying here a bit, but I mean, they're just kind of getting murdered before they get even back into the battle. Genoese crossbows um, doing fairly well, but also getting focused down now by archers. But I mean, Hungary holds strong. It holds strong. If you were these guys, you'd be like, Good God, what are we going to deal with? Like, look at this brave soul. He's not even caring about the formation. He's going to stand outside of it. But, I mean, we are starting to pile a lot of troops. If you look at it, we're piling a lot of troops on this flank um, to try and punch through here and then swing around and do enough damage. I mean, they've now committed troops to this uh, cavalry fight, swordsmen. This is certainly going to turn it in their favor. As I say that, though, Hungarian knights are breaking. So, I mean, it's a little too late, it would seem. And these Hungarian swords may not actually be enough. They may need some some spears in to actually uh, kill these cav off, but I've, all their spears are kind of um, being held up in 
fighting in the front lines. And Billman now breaking. These guys had enough. I think I probably killed more of them with my own archers than I did actually um, with pikes. But that's a mistake we're willing to make. And here we go. The heavy infantry is going in. We're sending in heavy infantry now. Their big axes hopefully cut through these pavises. We might need to send some other stuff in to help support these guys. Maybe these swords need to go back in. But, I mean, again, look, they're barely getting through, and they're probably getting cut down by uh, by spears because they've got no, no shield to defend themselves. Let's see what happens. Can they kill this guy, this bloodied up guy? So much goddamn breaking going on. But, I mean, the pavies hold strong. And we're still breaking on this side, even though we're basically broken through. Look, 71, this is probably the most weak of the units. And we still can't break through. Insane. Um, but, I mean, my men are kind of m moving forward and uh, attacking. Look, they've got their shields out. They're getting ready. I think the attack order's coming. Hopefully it is. I hope so. I mean, all that's now engaging at the moment is this small heavy infantry unit here. And the cavalry on the far flank. Which, I mean, it's not looking good now for um, the Hungarians. They're sending in that depleted cavalry unit. Look at them. The brave few souls back there. They're coming with like, we're coming, comrades. We're going to save you. But, I mean, they're breaking already again. These Seifers, I mean, they're holding strong. And a lot of them have died. But, I mean, we're now pulling out and just letting the spears here fight against these swords. And that's probably the best thing to do. And look at that, we've broken those. And it's just coming down. And we've got the spears engaging here. Just waiting for the right moment. We're weakening these pavies just a little bit. Before we go in, we're just chipping away. Chipping away. I mean, there's a huge mass of infantry here. Good God. There's Billman, archers, fighting, I think, two units of swordsmen here. I mean, God blimey. I mean, look at that. The Osman emblem. Rising high and hungry. Can the can the Hungarians hold strong? Unlike they did in history. I mean, as I say that again, more Hungarian units breaking. But I mean, these few are holding against the many on just about every single front. But yes, every single moment it seems like another unit of mine is breaking. This guy just cheekily going to fire a shot while we're in combat. Go on then. Go on, sir. Try and do it. Yes, he did it. He probably just killed some poor bugger. But, I mean, these these swords have had enough. And there we go. The break is r well and truly on. We're already into the back lines here. Cavalry uh, in general having to be committed, in fact. Not just any old cavalry. The Genoese crossbows having so much joy shooting men at range and now uh, having a fight in combat. Handgun is still going strong back there for me. I don't really know what they're shooting at. Probably shooting a lot of my own men. But I mean, this solid line here of halberdiers and pavies is still holding strong. I mean, they've lost their pavises here. Are they broken? No, they've pulled back. Probably to help with the whole fight back here. So these halberds are now in a bit of danger from missiles. Um, I think the infantry will be going in soon then to probably seal the deal. The balance power is massively now in favour of the Ottomans. As, uh, I mean, it's basically two to one odds. But, I mean, they have the pikes, they have the halberds. It's looking risky, though. I mean, look at all the spears and stuff that are broken and then returned. The cavalry back here doing some damage. This cavalry is kind of just, I don't know what it's doing, actually. I probably just forgot what this cavalry was doing, but I mean, it's doing some damage back here now, and it's, as you can see, we are, we are now surrounding what is remaining of the uh, the pikes and the pavis and the halberds, but I mean, so they may need to almost form sort of a, not a new box, but almost like a, they want to flip these sides in, maybe make a triangle, almost, they don't really have enough numbers for a box. I mean, these billmen here, these archers, firing at point blank. Fight and die for the Sultan. They are losing their advantage and the king is going in for a charge. Where is he going? Oh, he's coming in here. 
Let's kill him. Kill them all. It's a fairly good charge. Um, kind of into his back of his own men. It would have been better to go into the other side. But you can't get everything. What is going on over here? Is this just a... Well, there's a fight going on over here, is there? Some swords that return. They've kind of been dealt with quite quickly by the... Uh, by the swords. Um, you didn't see it, but I've just remembered. There was the, that cavalry that got lured over here. They got into a fight and they basically all died. <laughs> kind of what happened and that also happened over here as well. Uh, which is a shame to see. The bombard's still safe. The horse archer's doing their job. It's what we love to see. Um, unless you're, uh, fight, uh, you're backing the Christians. Which if that's the case, the general is breaking now. It's not looking good. So many archers firing off now. I mean, there's just... What's there left to even shoot? I mean, and there you go. The bombards, look at this. Well, you can see where the lines were. It's basically where these heavy infantry are now. And the bombards are behind. Oh, God, those handgunners. They're just merciless shooting at these guys here. Come on, let's get another volley. We might not even get that. But the field is basically the Ottomans now. There's not much left. The hal one halberdier holding to the end. And there's just handgunners returning that are fleeing in the forest. They're going to go and tell their comrades of what happened here at Mohawks. They're like, good God, the Ottomans are coming. Save yourselves. As they're being chased down by some heavy infantry. Get these guys. Come on. Kill this man. Don't let him get away. Kill this guy. Oh, yeah. He's not allowed to live. And there we go. The, uh, the bombard as well. I don't know what they've been doing for half the battle. The crew. But that is basically it. The Battle of Mohawks has followed history. Uh, and the... Hungarians have been annihilated, it would seem. Well, but they fought honorably, I would say. Annihilation is not necessarily the case. They fought honorably. Those pa where that Pavis wall broke, there wasn't much standing in the way. A close victory is certainly uh, what I, how I would put it. So we'll end the replay and have a look at the uh, end results. So, I mean, the Ottomans nearly lost uh, 2,000 of their own men, um, but they were they did massively outnumber. But I mean their quality was not great. These Martelosis were not great, neither the spears. It was really these archers back here that saved the day. Otherwise it would have certainly been um a Hungarian victory, you imagine, because I don't think there was any way we were gonna break through the pikes and the halberds. I mean look at their the kills for the pikes. Two hundred and fifteen, insane. And then some of the halberdiers nearly getting up to two hundred as well. Most of them getting a hundred. Swords doing very well as well, generally. Most getting around 80, uh, 50 kills, that one getting 80. Uh, generally, his crossbows getting a fair few kills, uh, not too many, but a few. Handgunners getting about 40 odd. The Cavs did not really perform, it was a bit of a shame to see. The Bombard getting 25 kills, that's okay. And then the General getting 28, that's okay. The Pavis did do get many, but they um, basically were just holding them at bay while other uh, groups of the army were get, doing the killing. Um, we'll quickly look at the Ottomans as well. They get around, I don't know, there's quite a lot of kills here um, for the archers. Nearly 200 here. I mean, two on 111 and then some on 267. Wow. They did insane that these uh, archers down here. And then the handgun is getting 140. Cavalry doing very well, generally. And uh, some heavy infantry doing pretty, performing pretty well as well. Getting 112. And the Bombard getting 50, and the Great Bombard only getting 10. What a shame. That Great does not live up to itself. But anyway, guys, if that was the Battle of Mohawks. Uh, if you enjoyed, then please leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here. And leave a comment if you want to see any other historical battles recreated. Um, and until next time, guys, I will see you later.